Hi, this is David Olson with the Nebraska Forest Service with another tree pest detector workshop. Today we're talking about the thousand cankers disease and the walnut twig beetle, which are two things that kind of go hand in hand to uh, essentially cause the disease in the tree. The uh, thousand cankers disease is actually the fungus that is present in the tree, and then the beetle itself, the walnut twig beetle is what's vectoring that disease into the tree. Now this beetle is actually thought to be native to the American Southwest. Uh, the problem is that it attacks mainly black walnut, which is the species more commonly found in the eastern United States. It first started to show up a few decades ago, mostly uh, along the range of the Rockies and towns in Colorado and the Front Range, especially where it started killing off a lot of black walnut trees. It's sort of like Dutch elm disease. We think of Dutch elm disease and how there's a few different bark beetles that vector that disease. And when it gets into the tree, it causes wilting and clogs the vascular tissue very quickly. Now, thousand cankers disease is a little bit different. The beetle that vectors it, the walnut twig beetle, is very, very tiny. It's about the size of a flea. So an extremely tiny insect. And like all bark beetles, they're going to be burrowing in just underneath the bark of the tree. So when walnut twig beetle attacks a tree and it's carrying the fungus that causes thousand cankers, that fungus causes uh, death of the tissue around the actual gallery where the beetle is tunneling into. Now, it's not systemic like Dutch elm disease, so it doesn't spread far out into the tissue, which is why we call it thousand cankers disease, because it literally ends up being more of a death by a thousand cuts kind of thing, where it takes many, many beetles carrying the fungus to infest the tree, and eventually those tunnels that they're dig or digging and burrowing into the tree become infested with this fungal pathogen, and that causes the tissue death surrounding that and eventually will girdle that stem and kill that tree. Now when we're looking for thousand cankers and uh, walnut twig beetle there can be a few things that we're looking for. It's important first to note that just last year walnut twig beetle, the insect vector that can carry the thousand cankers disease, was first discovered in the state of Nebraska. It was discovered by a, in a trap by the Nebraska Department of Ag uh, outside of Garing, just south of Scotts Bluff. At this time of this filming in 2020, there are no known cases of thousand cankers disease within the state, although survey efforts are ongoing for that. Because remember, we need both the beetle and the fungal uh, agent present in order to confirm the disease in the actual tree. Now, when we're looking at trees, what we're generally looking for, um, it's kind of similar to a lot of our other pests that we're talking about. We're looking usually for a more of a decline in the canopy of the tree. As I mentioned, this will take many, many beetles infested with the fungal pathogen to actually kill the tree and kill off branches. So usually it'll be a slower decline in the tree. You'll start to notice a decline in usually a walnut tree, a black walnut, like I'm standing next to. And what you also might notice are flagging branches. Now, when we mean flagging branches, uh, we mean branches that might be turning yellow or brown, sticking out from the rest of the tree. The prime time to see these is going to be late summer and because the beetles, if they're present, are going to be killing off that tissue once we get into the hot, dry period of summer and if that fungus is present actually causing uh, death in the tissue and the branches, it's eventually going to cause that branch to sort of flag and turn yellow, usually in late July, early August, any time in there. So that can be a prime time to go out and look at walnuts and see if you see any branches flagging. Now, just because you see a branch flagging doesn't automatically mean that it's uh, thousand cankers or even the beetle that could potentially be carrying it. It could be something as simple as a broken branch, rodent damage or something like that. So you'll always want to get a closer look at that branch to see what's actually causing it. But that can be one of the main things to look for when you're looking for thousand cankers disease. The other things to look for when you actually get close enough would be the galleries and exit holes of the beetles themselves. Now, as I mentioned, these beetles are very tiny. They're about the size of a flea. So the exit holes are going to be very, very small. They're going to look kind of like little shot holes in the bark or the branch. And that will indicate that there is some bark beetle present. It won't necessarily be the walnut twig beetle, but it would indicate the presence of some sort of bark beetle. The other thing that we can look for are the actual um, tunnels and the fungus associated with that. It'll actually cause the tissue to become discolored around where the galleries are. If you get a branch that you're suspicious of, you can peel off with a knife just that outermost layer of bark, and instead of being green, you'll instead see 
uh, tunnels that are sort of become discolored and you'll see the necrosis and the dead tissue around those galleries turning a brown or even black color. And that's a very good indicator that we could be dealing with thousand kinders disease. And in that case, you would want to submit that to either the Nebraska Department of Agriculture or the Nebraska Forest Service by contacting us first. So the main host of walnut twig beetle and the thousand cankers disease of concern is going to be black walnut, which is widely planted as a street tree in Nebraska and can also be found in some wild locations. Black walnut's a pretty easy one to identify. Um, during the winter, it looks a lot more uh, bare than other trees just uh, due to its branching habit. But there's a few characteristics we can use right now during the growing season to identify it. First, what you'll notice is when you look at it, uh, at the actual branches, if we remember the um, mnemonic device Mad Bucking Horse for opposite branching. This is not opposite branching, this is alternating branching. So the branches are coming off at kind of at alternating uh, points from each other. They're not like a mirror image. So we know right away this is not a maple, it's not an ash, it's not a dogwood, it's not a uh, buckeye, and it's not a horse chestnut. So when we get closer, we see that the leaf scars also are very distinct on this. The leaf scars will sort of resemble a uh, monkey space is kind of the best way to look at it. It kind of has two eyes and a mouth if you actually look at the leaf scar where the leaves came off. And the leaves are these large compound leaves. So this that I'm holding is actually a single leaf and all of these are individual leaflets. And you'll notice that the leaflets here are pretty much opposite. Now this could be confused with something like a pecan or a tree of heaven, uh, but there are a few things that you can use to distinguish this. First of all, tree of heaven, as we discussed in an earlier video, would have the little glands at the base of the leaf, which this does not have. These look like they've had some sort of herbicide damage or possibly frost damage when they were first leafing out. Um, and pecan as well, a lot of the hickories that are not pecan will have many fewer leaflets than this. And even pecan usually isn't quite this large. Now the other um, really big characteristic of walnut is that it produces a very distinct smell. If you crush any of the leaves or the fruit or anything like that, it has a very distinct uh, kind of pungent smell. I'm not really sure how to describe it, but if you smell it once, you'll probably not forget it. And that's actually um, quite unique to walnuts as a whole. As you'll see on this tree as well, it's also producing the distinct fruit. This will give it away, um, obviously, from pecan. Pecan's going to be more of a football shape. Walnut's obviously going to be these much larger, round-shaped walnuts that are going to have the um, fruit inside of them. Uh, be careful if you do those, or if you do try to get the walnuts out of those, because they will stain your hands. And then, if we move closer to the bark of the tree, is we'll notice this deeply furrowed bark on the walnut as well. Um, something very characteristic of it, and when you start seeing this, it's very easy to distinguish a walnut from a lot of other species out there. So I'm standing here next to a tree that we definitely don't want to confuse with ash, and that's box elder. Box elder, although it can look quite similar to ash, is actually in the same genus as maple. And it's a tree that's very commonly found, especially in fence rows. It's a very hardy tree that you'll often see just riddled with insect exit holes. It gets attacked by a number of things, but it's kind of one of those trees that just won't stop going. It doesn't always look great, but it won't stop going. Uh, there's a few things that we can use to distinguish this from ash and will act, in fact show us that it is more of a maple. So if we look at the branching habit of this, like maple and ash, it's both going to have that opposite branching habit where the branches are coming off opposite each other. So that does tell us that it's in that same grouping with the opposite branching tree. So it could be a maple or ash at this point. And when we come down to the leaves, the leaves are actually made up of usually these three leaflets here. And looking at that, because it's broken up into leaflets, our kind of uh, instinct is telling us that it's ash because maple generally has just a simple um, large lobed leaf. But in this case, this actually does belong to the maple genus. And you can see kind of looking at the leaves, they almost, the leaflets themselves look more like poison ivy almost. They don't look like the ash. Usually ash have five or more leaflets. These are only going to have three um, leaflets to them. And if this had the uh, seeds on it, the seeds would actually look much more close to maple. They would be in pairs um, with the kind of like helicopters, as people like to call them, with maple as opposed to the paddle-shaped or oar-shaped single um, bunches of seeds like ash would have.